Well, good morning. It's uh, Pastor Reg here at the Woody Point Studio. I'm a little bit earlier than normal, and the reason for that is because I got so much ribbing last week about sitting in the sun and having the shadows coming in my on my face, and I couldn't stand it. So um, I've decided to come on a bit earlier before the sun comes up and ruins my appearance. I know my appearance is important to everyone, uh, except for me. Actually, that's not true at all. The real truth is uh, I've double booked myself. I've got a doctor's appointment at half past nine, so I can't do both. So the doctor wins over you. I'm doing this a bit earlier. I'm wanting you to understand just one thing this morning, and that is uh, a concept. Well, we talked about them last time, uh, about home, presence, and rest. We're thinking about Jesus' ministry of intercession in heaven, what he's doing now. We all know about him having died on the cross for our sins, rising from the dead, ascending to heaven. And he's up there. The Gospel of John describes a journey that he was on that's going up and up towards heaven. He said he had to do it alone. But we're wanting to be in heaven with him. Uh, and the reality is that he represents us there, his ministry of intercession, so much so that he, he himself is simultaneously present in heaven and in us, and we too are simultaneously present here and with him in heaven. And I read from Hebrews last time about uh, us being God's house. We are God's house, we are at home, and because we live in God's presence here, we can have rest. And we talked about Jesus' offer, where he said, come to me all who are weary and I'll give you rest. And really what he's talking about is in relationship to his father, there are places of rest. When we have him present in us, we find rest for our souls. And it's impossible to overstate how fantastic that rest is. Well, today I want to use those same concepts, but I want you to think, think big uh, for a minute and think about what's happening with God. And just excuse me for a minute. Uh, it's a bit earlier and my dog's a little bit, got a bit more energy. Rich, go away. Go. Um, I can't really, <laughs> he's, he's going to jump on me. Look, sit down. Sit. Good boy. That's better now. All right. Uh, look, I'll just lead in with the passage. Isaiah 66, very famous passage. You hear me read this all the time. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things and so they came into being, declares the Lord? This is the one I esteem, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. And I read that and I go, hang on a minute, we're looking at God and he's looking for a house, a home, and he's looking for a place to rest. God himself wants a place of rest. And as he looks over creation, everything that he has made, <laughs> where can you keep him? We all understand the idea of a temple and God's presence being there, but you've got to think big. Is that really what he was after? Isaiah sees for us that what God is looking for is to have a personal, relational home with the people that he's made in his image. And so God is looking for a home. And so when, when you see that Jesus was sent in order to die for the sins of the world 
and rise from the dead and enter heaven to reconnect people to God. We, from our perspective, think it's all about us getting rest, us having a home, God's presence coming to us for our sake. When in reality, what's happening is at the same time that Jesus is creating a house or a home in which there is God's presence and there is rest available for God. There is a, there is a sense and with, in which God himself is looking for a home. He's looking for a place to rest. He's made us. He's made this whole show. And one of the purposes is for connection with us. And so just as we say that we, we've got these concepts of home, rest and presence, and they're applying to us, it's also true for God. And so I would just want you to pause and think for a moment. God finds rest in you. God's home is you. I find that absolutely transformational. You can't be having, you know, what we'd call these days a low self-esteem. You can't be down in the dumps. You know, I, I, I hear about people talking about the black dog and all that kind of stuff. I get that. I understand that depression is real and heaps of people have it and, and they need to go to the doctor. I, I'm not talking about that. But the whole idea that the creator of the universe has created for himself a home and it's you lifts you up and seems to take all of the problems of this world, the difficulties of this world, the problems in life and so on, seems to put them in a totally different perspective. God the Father has his home in you. See, and these concepts are not just, you know, theological things I made up. It's in it's in the discourse on the up, in the upper room for Jesus. Real famous verse, John 14, 23, where Jesus is talking about uh, people who love him. And he says, it, he says it like this. Let me find it. I'll quote it and I'll get it wrong. So I'll read it and get it right. He said, if anyone loves me, he'll obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Make our home with him. Believers are the home, the household of God. The place where God chooses to rest. The place where he longs to be is with us. You see, sometimes in our problems, we focus on ourselves and we try and, and think it's all about us. I need to do the heavy lifting in my relationship with God. I need to somehow get God's attention. I need to twist God's arm to get him to be concerned for me. Now, it, it, it's a denial of God's love. He loves us and he's created us to be his home. He wants to be with you. He wants to connect with you. He wants to find rest. He's looking for it. It takes a bit of the pressure off. If we're going to be people of faith who walk in the fullness of Jesus, I think we're going to be people who understand that there's a purpose from God in him wanting to live with us. We are 
the household of God. What a blessing it is. Well, I'm going to keep talking about this uh, next week. Uh, in particular, I've got some uh, verses in John 14 I want us to unpack because I think they get unpacked the wrong way because people don't get some of this stuff about home and rest and presence and all that. But when you get that in context, the ministry of Jesus' intercession is so profound, it sets us aright. If we understood it properly and we're trusting him for it, then our lives would be transformed. Let me pray and you, you'll be good for the day. Let's pray. Father, it is a privilege to share and to think about you in the morning. And I ask that you would help us each one to see you, to feel your heart and to understand that you are looking for a place of rest and that you've created that through Jesus, through that great journey that he took, that he had to take alone and that he ascended to heaven. Lift our eyes to see him there and to see and understand the purpose that that was for your sake to find a place of rest, to create a household, the fellowship of believers. And so, Lord, help us to see. And I pray that you would give us the confidence to trust that it's all true and to be assured that because you are present with us, that despite our circumstances, despite our feelings, we are the household of God. We are a place of your rest. And just as we find rest for our weary souls, you, the creator God who's never weary, you find rest in us. Lord, fill us with this great truth and may it uh, grow legs in our lives and in our experience as we walk with you even this day. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we'll uh, see you later, folks. Sorry to do this a bit early, but there you go. Uh, one of the side benefits is I don't have shadows on my face. Okay. I'll see you next week. Don't forget, there's devotions. I can't say at half past nine every morning, but you know what I mean. Tomorrow, Wednesday, generally at half past nine, it's, it's on. So God bless, and we'll see you around. Bye.